Well, it's great to be back with you today. My name is April Colquitt. I'm on staff here at Wellspring, and I am so excited for what we're going to talk about today. We're giving you some very practical content today that I think you're going to find useful. I'm a practical person. I love practical things. If you ever want to give me a gift, give me something practical that I can use. The last gift that I received was one of those robot vacuums that moves around your house, and I love it because it has made my life so much more efficient. I use it almost every single day. So that's what this message is today. We are giving you some practical things that we think you can use as you are growing stronger in your faith. That's what this whole series is about. We are learning how to have a strong faith. We've been asking, what would it look like for us to have an unwavering faith? The kind of faith where even in the face of uncertainty, even when we're not sure of the outcome, we can still choose to believe God's promises for our life. What would it take for us to have that kind of faith? The answer is trust. Our faith grows when we learn to trust God completely, when we put our confidence and our rest in Him and we keep believing His promises. And we've been pointing to this guiding principle. The stronger the trust, the better the relationship. See, God is not just the King of the universe. He is a loving Father who is in pursuit of a relationship with every single one of us. And He sent His Son, Jesus, into the world to rescue us and redeem us so that he could restore the relationship that was broken because of sin. And he's not just after any kind of relationship. God wants to have an amazing relationship, an incredible connection with us that is built on solid trust. So over the last few weeks, we've been pointing to five things that we think are key in helping us to grow that kind of trust, that kind of solid foundation of faith with God. These are not listed in the Bible, but if you've ever heard anyone talk about their faith, you've probably heard them reference at least one of these areas as being an important factor in helping them develop a stronger trust. We call them the five faith catalysts, and here they are. Practical teaching, providential relationships, private disciplines, personal ministry, and pivotal circumstances. If you've missed any of those conversations over the last few weeks, I want to encourage you to go to wellspringchurch.tv or log on to the Wellspring app and catch up on those conversations. We've had a lot of fun sitting down with our team and hearing from some different voices and how these faith catalysts have helped to grow their trust in God. The first week we talked about practical teaching and then we covered providential relationships. And then last week we began part one of a conversation about private disciplines. And what private discipline is about, it's really about us sitting down and having one-on-one time away from other people where we are getting to know God better on our own through prayer and Bible study. It's in those moments with God where we spend alone with Him that our trust goes to a different level with him. We've talked about how much value there is in being in circles of faith with people who are helping us to grow in faith and preserve our faith. There is a lot of value in that, but it's not a substitute for what we gain through one-on-one time with God because it's in those moments with him where we learn how to really communicate with God. It's where we learn how to speak to him through prayer, and we listen as he speaks to us through the, through the reading of his word. And just like any other relationship with people in our life, as you know, the stronger the communication, the better the relationship will be. But if you've ever tried to implement a practical um, time in your life where you can sit down and spend one-on-one time with God, you might have figured out that it's not that easy to do. Um, there's just so many other other things that fight for our time and attention, whether it's our jobs or time constraints or family members that interrupt us. It's, It's kind of difficult to make that a priority in our life. But what we learned is that that discipline is worth it because it will result in a stronger relationship with God. But it requires a little bit of discipline and a lot of determination. You may be thinking, but I'm just not a very disciplined person. And I get that. Um, Doesn't it just seem like some people are more wired to be disciplined than others? I am married to one of those people. Eric is one of the most scheduled and routine people you will ever meet in your life. Sometimes I feel like he operates off of a clock and I just don't get it. 
But I love it because over the last 17 years of being married to him, some of those habits have rubbed off on me and I've become a little bit more disciplined and it's made my life better. And the point is that even if you aren't good at keeping schedules and routines, even if you're not great at follow through, that doesn't mean you're a lost cause. In fact, we are here to help you with that today. That's where we're going to get really practical. We're going to sit down with our team as we have been doing every week. And some of our staff are going to share how they have made um, private disciplines work in their life. They're going to tell us how they do it, some things that have worked for them. We're going to give you some very practical tips and tools that we think you can use to help you grow stronger faith and learn to um, develop a habit of spending time alone with God. I hope what you will learn and what you'll see today is that there are so many different ways that we can spend time alone with God. And you might even learn that you already have a portion of your day that you could commit to spending with God through prayer and Bible study. So I want to dive right into that conversation with our team and let them share a few things with you. All right, thanks for joining us, man. I'm so, so excited about this conversation. We're going to be talking about private discipline, specifically how uh, each of us um, have really taken advantage of private disciplines in our life. I'm really pumped about this conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got three team members here, and one of the cool things about all, all of us is we're all different, uh, very different personalities. And so, you know, April, uh, Colin, he works with our student ministry and with our creative team, and then Abby is our director of spiritual, spiritual development. Uh, thank you guys for being here today. Uh, you know, we, we've been talking about private disciplines. Last week we talked about why they're important. And today we really want to be as helpful as possible to, to help people understand how to do this yeah. in their lives. And and for me, the, the how to do it really starts uh, personally mm-hmm. uh, with different personalities. One of the one of the cool things about us, uh, we all have this private discipline of reading the Bible and praying, but we all do it differently. Mm-hmm. And the reason we all do it differently is because we are all very different people. Um, if you've been around our church for a while, you know, uh, about a year ago, we did a, a series all about different temperaments. And uh, we've really leaned into how God created us uniquely. Uh, it really helps us as we work together. And as we've been talking about private disciplines, it's really interesting to hear all the different ways yeah. uh, we read the Bible and the different ways we pray. And I think that's really important because one of the things that can happen is we can be taught that hey, there's a one-size-fits-all approach to mm-hmm. private disciplines. Mm-hmm. Um, like I know for me, when I was in college, um, that was, you know, sort of high school and college is when I really got serious about my faith. And somebody told me that I had to get up at 5 a.m. <laughs> and read my Bible and pray right then because that was the only way to do it because it had to be a sacrifice. And guys, I'll tell you, I got up at 5 a.m. I tried to read my Bible and I'd wake up about 6.30 and realize I'd fallen asleep. <laughs> and so that, that wasn't for yeah. me. And um, kind of the first things I wanted just to talk about is not only how do we do that, but, but when did this become important? Mm-hmm. You know, April, when, when did it become important to you uh, to make, you know, spending time with God and reading the Bible a private discipline? Mm-hmm. I think one of the one of the points for me was that was kind of a turning point is when I realized that I had three kids to lead um, and that if I didn't take some time with God every day, my tank was always empty. I was finding that. I'm, like you, I grew up knowing that I needed to have this time with God, but I found it difficult to do. But I just got to this point where I was like, if I don't do this, I'm not going to be the best mom that I can be. Um, and, and on top of that, a great wife, because I just was always depleted. Um, and for me, that's something in my personality that is important. I need to reserve my resources and so, and always be looking for ways that I can fill my tank back up. And so I just began to pray, God, help me to want to spend time with you. Um, it, I can honestly tell you, it wasn't something that was just innate within me where I was like, I cannot wait to read my Bible. Um, it just wasn't reality for me. And probably for a lot of people at home too, that, I just began to say, God, help me wake up in the morning and want to read my Bible. Um, just that, literally that simple, mm-hmm. that honest with God. And I saw him begin to answer that prayer that I would wake up in um, a little bit earlier than I absolutely had to, not 5 a.m., mm-hmm. um, but I would just wake up and think, okay, I can do this today. And so um, for me, that was kind of the, the turning point, how I got started. All right. Now, Colin, how about you? When, when did it sort of, I mean, because you're, you're a resident young person, and so when did, when did it really click with you that, hey, like, spending time with God on my own matters. There's something I need to prioritize. Mm-hmm. I think for me, a lot of it had to do with 
I was realizing that all my time in prayer or in the Bible was always in reaction. It was always when I was emotional or when something was happening, mm-hmm. pivotal circumstances, mm-hmm. right? It was always in reaction to that. Mm-hmm. And then finally it kind of dawned on me. It's like, hey, you know, God can actually help with this if you go ahead and get the time to know him deeper mm-hmm. and you start making that something that happens every day. And it's not purely in reaction to events, but instead it can help you with those events if you do it beforehand. Mm-hmm. So that was the big thing for me. Awesome. That's awesome. Good. Abby? And I think for me, it's very similar to both of you. Um, I, it was a, when my kids are very little, but it wasn't to be a better mom. Um, that time in my life, I realized that caring for people was a very, it was a gift I had and it was something I loved to do. And I recognized that I, I couldn't care for people in my own strength. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't the best for them. I tried, mm-hmm. but it wasn't the best for them. Um, I'd already, I had had, I'd read my Bible and prayed a lot um, from childhood. I mean, mm-hmm. I grew up in a Christian home, um, but hadn't made it a discipline until I realized people depend on me. And yeah. um, so it started out of a reactionary yeah. um, kind of obligation, but it mm-hmm. became something that I really do treasure in my day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, so April, let me ask you this, uh, and then anybody can answer, because again, we, we want to be super practical for yeah. everybody at home. Uh, what's something you know now mm-hmm. that you wish you had known when you started trying to make uh, reading the Bible a part of your life? Gosh, that's a great question. Um, I think something I wish I'd known is that it's okay if I miss some days. You yes. know, it's sort of like what you were talking about. Is there seem to be these rules mm-hmm. surrounded around um, giving us all these boundaries and ways to spend time with God. And so I would, you know, have two days where I would do it, and then I would not, and I'm like, oh God, I failed. You know, mm-hmm. and that's just not true. That is not who God is. Mm-hmm. So I wish that I had learned sooner that it's okay to break routine mm-hmm. and to start again and to start again and to yeah. start again. That's what we. That's what we have to do. Um, I think for me, that would probably be the biggest one. It's funny you said that because we, what that made me think of is uh, for me, uh, one of the things I, I wish I'd known when I started is that, you know, every time you read the Bible and spend time with God, like you're not going to hear the angels yeah. and you're not going to yeah. have this life-changing moment mm-hmm. of, of clarity. Um, quite frankly, sometimes you're going to sit down, read your Bible, you're going to read a chapter, whatever you're reading, and go, okay, that was interesting. Mm-hmm. And you're kind of going to go about your day. Right. And now sometimes, please hit, don't get me wrong, there, there are moments where God just does amazing things, but mm-hmm. it's like any relationship. You know, some, we, I think we talked about last week. Yeah. Sometimes Danielle and I will have really deep conversations that move us, you know, forward. Sometimes we fight, and then sometimes it's just like, hey, are you grabbing the kids? Yeah. And the same is the relationship with God, but it, it's that, it, it's the discipline of doing it on a consistent basis that builds that relationship. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, sometimes you're gonna read your Bible and just be confused. Yeah. Like, wait, <laughs> yeah. what? Um, yeah. You know, that's the value of circles. You yeah. have other people to, to talk about. How about you guys? Yeah. What, what, what do you wish you'd known? I think that what you touched on is one of the things that frustrated me the most at the beginning because um, I am a very emotional person. I do feel a mm-hmm. lot. I'm a very empathetic person, and so um, I didn't think I was doing it right if I didn't have that supernatural feeling that something was shifting. Um, but what I've discovered is as I stuck with it went back to it, continue to make it a, a priority, is that that follows. Like what I read that morning that might have confused me, I might not recognize it for the next two or three days, right. but it'll come back to yeah. me. So yeah. it is yeah. it is understanding that there is something supernatural that's happening even when you don't feel it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's my biggest thing. No, and to kind of go off of that, what I think a lot for me is that uh, in the beginning it was a lot of like it's kind of for me. And it goes back to you get that supernatural feeling. What is this thing I want to learn? And a lot of times when you start reading, you don't know. It's about a relationship with Jesus. And Jesus makes that relationship practical and beneficial for loving your neighbors. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. you never know how things, something you read in the morning might apply to a conversation later in the day. Yeah, that's so true. It might make literally zero sense. Mm -hmm. But then as you're going through the day, all of a sudden that starts um, making an impact on interactions you have with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so something you read wasn't for you. Yeah, it wasn't for exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that actually touches on something. Uh, if you've been around church at all, or you've heard anybody talk about the Bible, sometimes you'll hear some people say, you know, God's Word is alive, that the mm-hmm. Bible is alive. And what that means is exactly, Colin, what you just articulated, is that um, exactly, sometimes we'll read something, and we'll be like, and that's what I'm going through today. Sometimes we'll read something, and it'll just be planted because God's planning it for next week, mm-hmm. um, and God's giving us something. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, a lot of really great, just kind of helpful overall 
stuff we wish we'd known. Um, again, I want to get super practical today. So um, I want to talk about when you read your Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to talk about how you read your Bible. I want to talk about what you do while you're reading. So first of all, I'll go first. Um, you know, I read my Bible. I'm, I'm privileged to work at a church, and mm -hmm. so I can sort of do that. And so I read my Bible uh, first thing when I get to the office. Um, I get up, go to the gym, come home, get dressed. Um, when I get to work, I shut my door, and that, that's when I read, that's when I pray, mm -hmm. and that's sort of what, what propels me into the day. So now, Abby, what, what does that look like for you? When do you read your Bible? Yeah, so for me, it's, it's, it's very similar. In this season, structure at home kind of looks like what structure at home looks like. It's kind of <laughs> every day is day to day. Yeah. Um, so I try to do my quiet time before I leave the house, first thing in the morning, grab a cup of coffee and do that. Um, I actually have a study Bible um, and a Bible study curriculum and the U version. I like to uh, change things up. I like variety in my life. So it just depends on kind of what I'm learning that um, time. Um, but if I don't get that done at home, kids are up, grants moving, um, I will do it before I start my work here. I'll set time apart, but I actually leave the house a little early. So first thing in the morning, I, I usually use U version, one of the Bible app plans, or mm -hmm. just read out of my Bible. Yeah. Now, Colin, how about you? Like, when do you do this? So I do a little bit first thing when I wake up, because for me, I just find that to be really beneficial. It's not necessarily I have to do this amount or it's not necessarily super structured. Sometimes it's my notes from scripture I was reading the night before. Sometimes it's a chapter in the morning that just helps me in my day. But then I study more later in the afternoon or at night because that's when I can read other things around it, research context for different things or, you know, stuff like that. And then I can use that in the morning to propel me for my next day. Yeah, and when Colin says study, he, he means study. It's so yeah. fun having a conversation <laughs> with Colin. Like, he'll go on YouTube and watch, like, lectures about the Old yeah. Testament. I'm like, why? When you, said he was the, when you said he was the resident young person, I was also, he's the resident wise person. That's true. Yeah. Definitely. That's he's true. a studier, a yes. learner, which is yes. good. I do mine first thing in the morning similar to Abby. Mm -hmm. Um and sometimes, depending on how our day goes, again, when you've got kids in the house or you got to get out to the house earlier on some mornings than others, there are times when that doesn't happen. And I always just try to catch up later. Oftentimes, when we were in school, I would use that time in the car, you know, traveling to go get my kids or sitting in that car line to have a very, you know, intentional prayer time or to listen to a U version or um, something like that through, through my car. Mm -hmm. And, and to be able to listen to that scripture is helpful. But usually, more often than not, I do mine in the morning as I have coffee. Um, I'm in a Bible study with a friend. And so it helps to have, I'm, it's on my own. I'm doing it by myself. But it helps to have that other person go, hey, did you read mm -hmm. today? I love what we read. And if I haven't done it, I'm like, oh, I got to I gotta get on that. Right. Um, there, that's where the value of providential mm -hmm. relationships come, comes mm -hmm. in and, and, and growing with mm -hmm. other people. We can have that time on our own, but we use those relationships to help keep us consistent yeah. in our private disciplines. So what I, what I hope you're hearing, you know, as we're talking about this is um, these are all pretty much tailored to our lifestyle, mm -hmm. they're tailored to um, our stage of life, mm -hmm. uh, they're tailored to our, our personalities, which is, which is super important. Um, you know, the, the, the best way to make this consistent is to make it easy. Mm -hmm. You know, is to make it a part of, of our lives. Um, you guys have any tricks? Like, do you, do you schedule this? I mean, I know I do. Like, I, I mean, I don't put any meetings on the on the calendar, uh, and, you know, until about 30 or 45 minutes after I get to the office, just, just for me to know I've always got that spot. Mm -hmm. um, do you have, have any tips for people who are, who are trying this to figure out when they should do it and how to make sure it's something that, that's repeatable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, I really love you version. When I'm in a slump where it feels like, um, just full disclosure, you are just doing it because this, you know this is important. You're making this a discipline. Um, there's a lot going on. I, that's when I really lean on the you version, the Bible app. Um, I promise I'm not sponsored by them. It just has made it really easy for me to do this. But you can actually set up push notifications to go off at different times. Yeah. So. If it's going off with my alarm in the morning, I can send that time apart. And it, it gives me some flexibility just depending on my week. It'll hit every single day. And so it reminds me, oh, I can just literally swipe it open, read my Bible plan that day, spend that time, and it sets my day up so much better. So I try to set that up for first thing in the And be mm -hmm. honest, the, the version. version, I don't use version yeah. personally, but 
it has the streak, right? It does. Where you have the consistent yes, days, yes. and that that just scratches that competitive yes. itch of you. Yes. We talk and, about personalities. You, know, you yep. wanna you wanna be able to you know get get that. What's what's the longest streak I've, you've ever had? I have tried to. I swear, I, I had a I had a hundred and eighty day streak, yeah. and That's then all good. of a sudden the the I went down to one, and I. I was trying to look at a petition that I, I know I did it. I know I was on, but that they don't have a petition yet. So you, Virgin, if you're listening, I'd like to petition my street. So that, that actually, that's, that's a really good good segue. So, you know, not only is it, is it how, is it, when do we read the Bible, but what, what do we read? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so many people ask, okay, where do I start? How do I read the Bible? And, and so we, we want to talk about that a little bit, not only personally, yeah. But, you know, how we've sort of built the church and all, all the different departments represented here uh, to make that helpful. Um, I, I'll go first. For me, I, I'm also, I'm in a men's Bible study, been in it for years. And um, we read one chapter a day. And, um, you know, I'm very big on reading the Bible slowly. Mm -hmm. And so typically we meet every two weeks. And we'll, we'll basically put about, at most, six or seven chapters in those two weeks. Yeah. Um, because my, my real hope is that either you can read it twice or you, you take the time every day to sit down and read and not skim. Mm -hmm. And so um, we will basically pick a book of the Bible and we'll read through. We've read through uh, the Old Testament together. We've read through the New Testament together. Um, you know, right now we're reading through Paul's letters together. And, and so that's what, that's what we do. And, and you're all right. It's so... It's that little check of accountability because, mm -hmm. you know, every two weeks you're going to come together yep. and we're going to talk about it. And so th that's what I do. Um, wh what do you guys do? How do you decide what you're going to read? Mm -hmm. um, so what I read is the Bible study that my Bible study group or uh, my Bible study partner and I have chosen. And we've chosen different things. Sometimes it's something topical that we want to study. Sometimes we have done what you're describing. We've chosen um, books from the Bible that we'll read through, usually New Testament but um, the biggest thing is, I think, just make a decide ahead of time what you're going to read. Don't sit down and just, you know, open up your Bible and pick a page. Mm -hmm. That doesn't usually work out really well. Um, but for me, I, again, similar to what you said, I'll try to choose a chapter or whatever is in that Bible study. You might not even do a whole day of that Bible study. Sometimes, depending on what you're doing, it could just be really long, and mm -hmm. I don't have that amount of time. Right. Um, so I give myself the freedom to really just read a few verses at a time mm -hmm. and try to marinate on those. Um, I don't really follow a, I've got to read this by this date mm -hmm. because I found that A, I'm not great at following through on that and B, um, I feel rushed and yeah. I, I miss some of the things that God may want yeah. to teach me. So for me, it's just more of whatever Bible study I'm doing, mm -hmm. I start with that and I work my way through it at my own pace, I think is the key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Colin? So for me, um, I have a study Bible, which study Bibles basically just give you a lot of information, mm -hmm. a lot of context. Mm -hmm. And I like reading other books and stuff that really get you into the context of the time of what you're reading. I think mm -hmm. it just kind of makes everything make more sense. You understand a lot of things better. So for me, that's probably my biggest thing of the what is study Bible and other books talking about the history of things so you kind of understand why things work and things will start making a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Abby, we know you use you version. <laughs> yeah, when I'm not using that, I, I have a study Bible as did we, well. Did we ever explain what that was? You version. What you version is? It's the yeah, it's, it's the Bible app on your phone. Yeah, we actually have a link link to it from our Wellspring app, just on that main page. Um, it's the entire Bible. There's usually some study Bible notes in it. <laughs> I promise, guys. I love this thing. But when I read my physical Bible, I have a study Bible as well. Um, and recently, I've really been getting into reading almost one chapter for the whole week and using the footnotes, the information mm -hmm. that the study Bible mm -hmm. has, and seeing how this chapter fits in the whole of the mm -hmm. Bible. Um, the Bible is really such a, it's a full story, yeah. that to understand this chapter in context of the whole story is, mm -hmm. is just something that I love to see happen. So, yeah. so again, I hope, I hope you're hearing. Um, pick what you're going to read mm -hmm. in advance, and uh, don't feel the need to read too much at yeah. one time. Um, I, I'm really just convinced, like like a chapter mm -hmm. um, at, at most is good. Mm -hmm. And that's actually how we plan our Bible study curriculum for our groups. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. we, we actually look at, is this something that they can practically apply to their life, but also is it something that they could easily begin making in a private discipline if they're not disciplined in this? Um, so that's actually a criteria we look mm -hmm. at for our adult program. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, God, God's word isn't really meant to be skimmed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not meant to be power read. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff he, he can he can teach us. And so, okay, so we know when you read. Mm-hmm. We know we know what you're reading. Mm-hmm. And so, what sort of habits have you developed as you read to to be able to to take what well, you've learned? I, I'll give you mine, mine first. I always read with my Bible open. And I have a, a Word document on my computer where I take notes. I, my handwriting is that of a four-year-old, and so I, I do everything. But I do. I mean, I've done it for years, and um, I'll just jot down anything I feel like God's saying. Sometimes it's personally. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it's for our church. Uh, many times that's where God will birth new series, mm-hmm. new content, and sometimes then I start writing even more. Uh, sometimes I write one line. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like every day I get a paragraph, but I try to get at least just one truth, uh, one promise, mm-hmm. one thought for the day, just kind of something um, that helps me be like, okay, that was time with God, and, and, and now, now I can move on. What, what tools have you guys found that, that you think are really helpful for, for people who are listening and, and kind of a practical next step for, you know, you're reading the Bible. Okay, now what? What do we do? Mm-hmm. I make notes in a notebook, like in a journal. Um, for a while, I thought, oh, journaling has to be a part of my time with God. And so years ago, I started doing like a prayer journal where I would write out these lengthy prayers. And then that just became really time consuming and I felt like it wasn't necessary. So what I do now is I have my Bible or sometimes I do use version, Abby, your favorite app. Um, but I also and I have my journal. And what I do is I'm a visual learner. And so I will write out, this is going to sound really crazy, but I almost make like hieroglyphics. If like something comes to mind and it gives me a visual picture in my mind, I'll just make like a simple drawing or I'll write words or I'll brainstorm words. For me, that's something that um, the application part of what I'm learning comes to life as I'm just making simple notes or drawing a, a visual picture of what I feel like God's saying to me in scripture. Um, another thing that I do Pause. is... Where do you do that? In my journal. In a notebook? Yeah. Real quick, just do any of you actually write in your Bibles? Oh, I do. Yes. Anybody? yes. Oh, yeah, I can't. I'm a highlighter, oh, underliner, no. circle the no. word, write a note beside it. Yeah, see, yeah. That's, that's why we're different. That, <laughs> that's great for you. The idea of writing in the Bible and that clutter and disjointedness moving <laughs> forward, like it, I feel my blood pressure rising even talking about it. <laughs> Uh, but again, that's a perfect yeah. example yeah. of how different people are and, and how much freedom there is um, in the system. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. Another thing that I've learned to do is to look up things that I don't know. Um, yeah. They were talking about using like commentaries and things like that. But I will, if there's a word that I don't know what it means, I'll just go look it up. Yeah. And that helps me give so much context right. and understanding to the scripture. For example, mm-hmm. we were studying in our women's Bible study. Um, the book of Psalms, and it kept talking about statutes and precepts. Those are two very biblical terms that we just don't use in life. And they seem to be interchangeable in the scripture. So I was like, let me just go look these up. And when I did that, it brought so much clarity to those passages of scripture that we were reading. Mm-hmm. Just simple things like that that I do in my time to, yeah. that helps. Um, and it's so funny, as you were talking, I'm reminded that this is very personal. Mm-hmm. Um, I was remember the Bible study you were talking about. We talked about statutes and pre- uh, precepts, and I remember thinking for just a moment, "Oh, why did I not get that in my quiet time?" Like it's that comparison that mm-hmm. robs us, and that's, yeah. it's mm-hmm. true even in our private disciplines. If we compare what works for us to somebody else, yeah. we are losing the personal intimacy that mm-hmm. can be found in this time. Um, so for me, how I do that, very similar journal. But I take that one idea that you talked about, Trey, and write it in a single sentence prayer. Like, mm-hmm. God, this is something you taught me today. Help me to help me to apply it mm-hmm. today. Help me to care for those around me in this way today. Um, and that one prayer, like over a week, there's seven sentence prayers that I can see what my heart's cry was every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's kind of how just short and sweet I do that. It's good. Colin, any any <laughs> any, any best practices for like how you actually take what you're learning and, and apply it? Um, how do I take what I'm learning and apply it? Uh, well, I think one thing is I use this app. It's called Logos, Logos yeah. Bible Software. Bible Software, 
and it has like an exegetical guide so you can go in there search up the scripture in the original greek or hebrew and it'll show you direct translation because sometimes certain words mean different things in their time versus our time and it can get super confusing if sometimes you just assume everything means what you think it means mm -hmm. and you can get really lost sometimes in scripture so for me to make sure that applies i've really gotten in the habit of using that a lot mm -hmm. so what i hope you're hearing again is it's 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 completely unique um when we read the Bible, it's completely unique what we read mm -hmm. in the Bible. Um, we also have our ways of, of how we read it. Um, but pretty much all of us have said a version of um, what we're going to be sharing with you this week. It's called the SOAP method, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is scripture, observation, mm -hmm. application, prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of a really great pattern to, to set for yourself. You know, when you're reading the Bible, you want to start, you want to read it, mm -hmm. and then you want to observe it. All right, what, what's going on here? And you want to look for, okay, what in this speaks to me uh, either right now? Um, what is this maybe talking about a struggle in my life that I can bring in line to, to what God wants? What kind of principle is this teaching me for how to love other people, how to treat other people? Mm -hmm. And then you kind of wrap it up with a prayer. All right, God, thanks for speaking to me today. Th thanks for helping. Th thanks for moving me forward. And, and then you, you move about your, your day. And what we've all experienced is that that discipline over time uh, creates a much stronger relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it just creates this trust and this assurance mm -hmm. um, that, our, that our God is good and He's with us. I mean, th there's really nothing like that first time you read something in the morning mm -hmm. and then that afternoon yeah. you need it. Mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah. wow, yeah. God, you, yeah. are so, yeah. you are so good. And so what, what our prayer for everyone watching is that um, as you begin to make private disciplines a part of your life, that it's something you can experience. And so this week, we want to help you do that. Um, we had some reading prompts last week. We're going to continue those this week, and we're going to include the SOAP method with those prompts. And so our prayer for you this week is that you figure out when works best for you. We're going to worry about the how. Uh, we're going to provide that for you. Uh, and then in the, in the coming weeks, we're going to have new Bible studies. We're going to have new, 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 new places for, for you to continue to do this. But again, private disciplines are so important to us, and uh, we believe they're going to be so important to you to grow in your faith. Uh, I want to thank you for being with us today. But before you go, our band's going to share uh, some of the ways that private disciplines have changed their life. Because again, this is all about creating a stronger faith. And sometimes it helps us to hear how God's moving other people's lives mm -hmm. to make it easier to do it in ours. Well, thank you for joining us today. My name's TJ. If you haven't met me before, I'm here with a couple of our worship leaders, Stacy and Josh. And uh, we just wanted to talk a little bit about how private discipline plays a role in our lives. And so, uh, Stacy, Josh, how has the private discipline of worship uh, played a role in your lives? Uh, for me, I know that I have five kids, so it's pretty noisy at the house most of the time, and you know, there's no relief from work to home to kids in bed and dinner. So, for me, uh, as of late, I've just been waking up a little earlier and just being up about five thirty, six o'clock, and then just having time to even if I'm working on some stuff, but just to have some worship music playing, just kind of getting away and being awake and having time when no one else is definitely not around or, or awake. That definitely helps for me. Yeah, um, I didn't realize how much I needed this until we stop leading together every week but when you would give us a new song I would listen to the song I would pull the lyrics up on Google I would write them down in a journal and then I would pray over them but then also I didn't realize that when I was writing them down I was memorizing God's Word like I was memorizing things that I would need later and I would pray myself through it I would journal through it I would write down and then say how is this relevant to me right now that's been probably my biggest my biggest tip for people that struggle with private worship, because it is weird and uncomfortable to lift your hands maybe in the house at first, but you'll get there. So we do a lot of music here at Wellspring, and we've played a lot of songs over the years, and you guys have been with us for, seems like forever. Um, and so what are some of the, uh, you know, the songs, what are the songs that you sing, your favorite songs that you kind of, your go-to songs when, uh, you know, things are good or things are bad? Well, the uh, we just introduced a few months back, Sea of Victory, and uh, it was it was perfect timing because I was going through some struggles with 
figuring out um, career-wise what was happening personally. There was just a bunch of different things. And then obviously we've got a big shift going on in, in our nation, our church and stuff. But just to know that, you know, what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it to good. And just resting in that and knowing that, you know, it's, it's his fight and he wins and we're his children. And so we win too. So that's been just really encouraging and just having that song just ring in my heart. It's just really helped me kind of get through this kind of strange time that we're in. Yeah, I think it depends on whatever season I'm in, what song I cling to. Like, do I need to be in a posture of praise or am I in a submitting to surrender or am I in, am I looking for justice in something that seems unjust? What am I looking for? And typically those songs are the songs that I play on repeat in whatever kind of season I need. So for right now, it would be the one we probably just did would be Raise a Hallelujah. Like, I'm going to see darkness flee and I'm going to raise a hallelujah in the midst of it. Well, thank you guys for sharing with us. And we hope that maybe some of these tips will help you um, in your private worship. It's been different uh, in, this, in this season where we can't get together on Sundays and worship. So, um, you know, and it might be different for you standing in front of your TV uh, trying to worship. But we hope some of this will help. We hope that you'll listen uh, to worship music as you, you know, go through your day and that it'll change your outlook and it'll change your heart. And uh, we are so glad that you joined us here uh, this week and we will see you right here next week.